Hey y'all, I'm Heather and welcome to my channel, The Debt Free Quilter. Today we're going to continue our night sky project by making our pinwheels. So we're going to start by pressing all of our half square triangles for the center and we're going to press them all open, which will reduce a lot of the bulk we find that will come together in the center of that pinwheel. So let's get started. Okay, who's ready to see a magic trick? We see we still have our lines on all of our small half square triangles. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we're gonna need a couple of things for this. We're gonna need our pressing board, our half square triangles, our iron, and in my case, I'm going to use this makeshift pressing stick. <coughs> now, the reason that I need this is because in our directions, for these small half square triangles, they want them to be pressed to the dark side, over like this. Now, instead, I am going to press these open because that will reduce bulk in the center of the block, and I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. But to start, I'm just going to press these. I'm going to just press them, I'll go back and press them open in just a, just a minute and show you how I do that. Ready? Ready for a magic trick? You see the line, right? Where'd it go? It disappeared! Fun! No, come on, play nice. Now I'm just going to press this open just like this. Flip it over and press the back. All right, let's talk about why we want to press these open really quick. Because we are going to be making a pinwheel for the center of our blocks, okay? Now where all these points come together, right here in the middle, there's going to be a nice big bulky seam right there. Let's just flip these over for a minute. You see these seams right here? When they're folded over to one side, it means they're all going to meet right here. And right here is where all the bulk of these seams is going to come together. So what I want to do is press them all open. So what I'll do now if this will behave is I want to take and open these seams up like this. And there's a couple ways to do it. You can do it like I've done just now, just on your flat table your flat pressing surface I'm going to put this on there like that it'll work as something called a clapper 
<clears throat> we'll get into that later. Okay. And I'm gonna flip it and press it again from the top just to make sure it stays nice and flat. But you see, with these open, it's going to reduce all that bulk that's gonna come into the center point. Now that's one way. Here's another. There are such things on the market called pressing sticks. Um, there are several out there on the market. I cannot name one brand off the top of my head because I don't have one. <clears throat> and what it is is a piece of half round trim that you can pick up at any lumber yard. Home Depot, Lowe's, can pick it up at any lumber yard and the ones you can buy are typically covered with maybe a thin cotton batting and a piece of canvas fabric some aren't even done with that some are just the plain wood this is a stair tread the bull nose part of a stair tread you, you got the rest of the step back here. And my husband picked up for me. There was a cutoff. But here's the outside. Here's a cutoff. Whoever bought it took the rest. So he found this for me. And I love this thing. The If you're going to make your own make sure whatever you get is a hardwood an oak or a maple i think just make sure it's a good hard wood not something soft like pine don't want that <clears throat> because pine also has a lot of sap in it and that will just ruin your fabric. It's, and we, we don't want any ruined quilt tops around here. The trickiest part is keeping it lined up on the top though. Okay, there we have that. Move that out of the way, move stuff back over. But if you see now, there's nowhere near as much bulk because these are all nice and flat. And we still have a lovely pretty pinwheel that's going to lay super flat. And we won't have to worry about all this extra bulk here in the middle when we're quilting it. Now the pinwheels are the only ones that I'm going to press open. The rest of them I will press to the side as the directions state. Because further out in the block we're not going to have to worry about as much bulk. But in the center... This will make it a really, really pretty block. All right, let's get finished. So we are going to press all the rest of these and get that done. And then next time we will make our pinwheels and start building our block.
All right, and there we have it, our first set of half square triangles for the center of our blocks. Okay, now I can hear y'all screaming at me, but wait, there's more to press, there's more to do, and you're right. But we're gonna start building the center of our block first, and then we will move on to the outer half square triangles because it's going to be all about placement with the outer triangles. It's we want to make sure we have the right colors going with the right star points. Otherwise, it's going to look a little wacky. I'm not sure I want that for this one, but it does give me an idea for the future. So, the next step is we're going to build our pinwheels and then move forward. Okay y'all, let's get back with our pinwheels. Finally. Let me be honest. I have not been on schedule with this series in filming and I apologize. I have not gotten as much as I wanted to get done per filming session this entire month. It's been a hot mess. Well, good thing we're working with hot pink, right? Hot pink, hot mess, way to go. Okay, let's talk about these pinwheels. If you notice, they're spinning in opposite directions. <clears throat> I did that on purpose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one set of blocks spin one way and one set of blocks spin the other. That's just going to make it fun. <coughs> Excuse me. As you can tell I haven't been feeling all that well the past couple of weeks. It's not the dreaded C word. It's just some cold or flu or whatnot that the kids brought home from school. Kids, gotta love them, right? Anyhow, so we've got our half square triangles all pressed, and we're gonna start building from the center of this block out. So, the, what's the first unit in the center of this block? The pinwheel. Now, as you can see, I have pressed these completely open. because it makes them a lot more flat than they would be if you press them to the side. This was a personal preference. This is what I did. You do not have to do this. This was simply my choice. Now, let's get started on building these pinwheels. Now, as you can see, I have my pinwheels laid out over here. This is so I remember which ones I want to go which direction. So what I'm going to do now is flip my stack over. And I'm going to lay out my pinwheels in the directions that I want them to go. That ain't right. <clears throat> there we go. Like so. And we see this one matches this one. And we just lay the rest out on top. I have my dark triangle over here and my light one down here. And I just keep laying them out on top of each other because these are all going to go the same direction. I want my purples all going the same direction and my pinks going all the same direction. Okay, there's one. <clears throat> Let 
clip. All right, this is gonna make it much easier to chain piece all of these through. I'm gonna start with this side. Well, I'm doing this in such a way that I can keep the top and bottom pieces of the same pinwheel together. That one was easy. We started with the non-bulky side. This one, we're starting with the bulky side. So we wanna lift our presser foot just a little bit and put this underneath, not quite to the needle, but underneath our presser foot so that this side will stay down since we have pressed it open. All right, let's go press. The first thing that we are going to do is set our seam. Now, why do we set our seam? Because we've just poked a bunch of holes in our fabric with our sewing machine, needle, and thread. The heat helps to close those holes or shrink them back down so they hold on to the threads better. At least this is what I've been told my entire sewing life. So this is the first step. Alright, now we bring back our handy dandy homemade pressing stick, grab a stack, and press it open. And I think it's time for another nifty notion, a clapper. This one 
came from the boys at Soya. What we do is we press our seam and then we apply the clapper on top of it. This absorbs any moisture that's in the block or unit it and it absorbs the heat and helps just press it nice and flat. <clears throat> the same thing that the pressing stick does. It absorbs excess heat and moisture and will help make our seams really, really flat. Before I go on, I want to show y'all something. Let me use these. Now, these are folded over to the side right now. You see? And notice I didn't pay a dang bit of attention to which way I pressed them. But, if I were to flip that over and nest those seams, do you see how thick that becomes right there in the middle. Just how thick that is from the amount of fabrics being folded right there. By pressing them open like we've done here just to show you It's a lot more flat right there in the center, so we won't have a big bulky seam that when we quilt it or if we send it to the long armor that it won't bunch up or anything like that. Less bulk means a flatter quilt. All right, we'll let that sit for just a minute and we'll go back to the sewing machine. Okay, more chain piecing. This time we're going to pay special attention to the center. We're gonna line up our seam. We're gonna flip like that and make sure that we're lined up just right because we wanna hit right there where this point meets.
All right, and now we have all these lovely pinwheels going in different directions. Okay, now we have seen how to make these beautiful pinwheels. When we come back next time, we're going to start building our center star. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.